today we'll have a look at a pen which I picked up at Pen Chalet, penchalet.com and, and this is an interesting one. This is a platinum and I, I'm quite familiar with this pen body because it was one of the earliest pens I bought, one of the nicer pens I bought. Uh, that was the black model. This is the Bourgogne, aka Bragagni model. Uh, and um, this uh, interesting pen. So this is by Platinum, obviously. Here's the, uh, uh, the, the the pen. I'm just showing you the box. There was a lot of stuff in the box. I didn't feel like reorganizing everything. Relatively simple box, but a nice box. And it comes with a, a bunch of stuff here. Uh, I just want to show you before I go onto the regular stuff. There was a little converter supplied with the pen. You get one cartridge, which has one of those really big um, platinum openings with a big metal uh, ball bearing in there as an agitator. There's a little fountain pen warranty card, simple enough, in English and Japanese, and there is the 3776 Century uh, User Manual, simple too. That's pretty much all there's to it. Now I'm going to cover the parts of the pen, I'll tell you what I like about it, what I don't like about it, and then I'll do a writing sample. Okay, so at, let's first have a look at the pen. I find this a very pretty material. It is a nice, uh, slightly transparent red. You can see the transparency in the, the cap there, for example. Um, and I I like the way this looks. It's, it's very nice. I used to have the black one with the music nib. This has a different type of nib. Okay, let's first have a look at you just see, grab your sheet of paper here, sorry. Uh, we have the top of the cap right there, finial, simple, works well. Clip, I've always enjoyed the platinum clips, they're fairly simple. Also nice and springy without being too tight. Uh, overall cap, nice design, simple. Uh, I like the, um, uh, the, the center band, it just says uh, 3776. It says platinum and it says made in Japan. Now, of course, 3776 is the height of Mount Fuji, uh, just like Mont Blanc puts 4810, the height of Mont Blanc, on their uh, pens, on their nibs. This is what platinum does. Then you have the barrel and you have the end cap there. Nothing fancy on it. The cap unscrews and platinum has this very fancy uh, system to ensure good. Uh, sealing so your pens should not dry out and indeed in my experience these pens don't dry out they don't really have hard starts because they have dried out okay here have the nib section uh, nice 14 karat gold nib I've always liked platinum's design it's quite simple uh, I enjoy that section as you can see is fairly straightforward and uh, nothing fancy going on there uh, and then there is a, um, a feed which I'm fairly certain is plastic pen opens up. Uh, as soon as I show a plastic barrel, someone is going to ask me, can this be converted to an eyedropper? I don't know. I haven't tried this, but I wouldn't do it. There's a metal ring in there and it looks like it's two parts. I think it's going to leak, but I could be wrong. I have not tried this. I also don't really have the desire to convert pens to eyedropper pens. Um, here is the converter, of course, that is also, that has that same fairly large opening. Platinum proprietary. Uh, and, and that's it. Now this nib is the soft fine and it's marked 3776, it has the platinum P on it, 14K SF for uh, uh, soft fine and 585 for the gold content. Let's show you that nib again. I think it is nice. You can see it has pretty uh, thin tines. They, they really get quite narrow. That, that's, that's the term I was looking for. Not so much thin, but, but narrow, which allows them to spread easy, right? If they would be very stocky, then they wouldn't spread so much under pressure. Okay, what do I like about the pen? What do I not like about the pen? Well, there are a couple of things I really like. I really like the looks. I really think this uh, Platinum did a very nice job in, in coming up with this finish. Uh, Bourgogne is very well chosen because it does look like red wine. You never really know. Right now I have artificial light on here. It's a bit later in the afternoon. Um, but it, it is a very nice rich red. Not a bright nuclear red. Not something like this. Uh, it is a more toned down wine red. So well chosen. Uh, I like the looks, I like the clip, I like the nib, I like the way it writes. Now this nib came 
uh, I'm, I'm guessing uh, I'm, I'm moving on into what I don't like so much. Uh, you get a decently sized pen when you post it. It's really quite small when you don't. This is uh, by no means a super large pen. Um, so be prepared for that, but when you post it, I think it's a very nice length, and this the section is, is I think quite think quite comfortable. Uh, it, it it I do think it's injection molded. You can see a little seam there. Some people don't like that, but you know it's it's simple enough for what it is. I think. I was talking about the nib. The nib came with tines that were slightly misaligned, which is always a pity. You are buying a more expensive pen, so I think you can expect the tines to be aligned properly. Now because this is a flex nib, when you right with it, they spread open a little bit and that for some reason seems to align them more properly. So I don't know if this is a conscious decision by Platinum or whether it really was a, a misalignment, but I, I can definitely see it. I don't have a loop at hand, but uh, one of the tines is just a little bit lower than the other. It kind of looks like this. So not really how it should be, I think. But even so, a pleasant writer and also a, a, a pen that keeps up relatively well as you write with it and flex with it. It is still not vintage flex, and it never will be either. Uh, there is still railroading, there is still running dry, but the feed seems to keep up all right, which which is definitely good. Also, it definitely is a soft nib. You really can feel the softness. It really opens up easily, so it's not like, say, noodles pen, you really have to push down to, to cause the tines to open. You do feel it's a gold nib. You do feel that it, it, it is meant to flex uh, in, in a uh, pleasant manner. Of course, that also means you need to be a little bit careful that you don't spring it. In all, I think this is a decent pen. I think it is well made, and I think that for the price you would pay, especially in the US, in Europe, a lot of these, these Japanese pens are very expensive, and I, I do think you, you get an interesting pen. Yes, it's small, but it has an interesting range of nib options. The, the music nib is a nib that I really enjoy, I really like using, and so for me, this this is a pen that I would definitely recommend to, to check out. Just don't expect something heavy or big, because it's small and light for sure, but the looks are very, very cool. So there you have it. Um, let's do a writing sample. I hope this was useful so far. Measurements are on the website. High resolution photographs, as always, kindly provided by Gourmet Pens, are on the website as well. Uh, sbrebrown.com. Let's see how this pen writes. And I'm glad to see you later. Bye bye. Okay, so here we go with, I'm gonna post this, the Platinum 3776. This is the Bourgogne. The nib is soft fine and the ink is, just for once, not a royal blue. It's Graf von Faber Castell Garnet. All right, yeah, I'm I'm I, I'm just going to say this because I know that otherwise I'm going to get a million comments on this. Yes, it sounds very scratchy. Bear in mind it's Japanese fine. That's like a Western extra fine, and the camera microphone just loves picking up that sound. All right, we're just going to do some regular writing. I'm not using excessive pressure. This is a very, very light hand. There you go. Now let's do some fast writing. One thing I will say about Japanese nibs and feeds is that they definitely, typically, are tuned very well. Because, as you can see, there's not a single skip here. Okay, wetness, well, it is a fine, and you could pretty much call this an extra fine, so don't expect too much. I mean, it's dry-ish, uh, but it does flow well enough to, to keep up. Now, here's the moment you've all been waiting for. I'm not going to push this too much, but this is definitely a soft nib, and as you can see, it just keeps going and going. Now, bear in mind, I have just inked up this nib, uh, or this pen. I typically don't do that right before a review because I want you to not I want to show you a pen that does not have a feed that is too saturated, but it was dry So I had no other choice. I'm sorry um, I have really wiped down the 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 feed though oh, You still see a bit of ink there. Anyway, I'm doing what I can guys. Sorry 
this is as far as I would push this nib. Springs back, nice and snappy. And now what you do say is, is that there is some ink from the feed running down there, but that's just a bit of excess ink. You see, if you just clean it well, it should not be a problem. Um, I'm very impressed, to be honest. Uh, I understand it's just ink, but even so, for a modern pen to keep up this well with the flexing, I think that is very impressive. So that's definitely an interesting pen to check out if you're interested in flex nibs and mainly flex nibs that actually write and that are modern. Um, I can really recommend this. Okay, well, there you go. Horrible end. Oh, of course, reverse writing. Well, it's already so fine, it won't add much. It gets a lot drier and scratchier. I wouldn't recommend that. Guys, that's all the steward. I hope this was useful, and I'll gladly see you later.